With nearly $2 million in backing and very impressive specs, the Luba Robot Lawnmower on Kickstarter looks like it could be a very interesting product, but personally, I wouldn't back it. Let's take a look at the main selling points of this machine. I would have much preferred if this was a hands-on review, and I was in contact with the manufacturers, Mamotion, about doing a review, but it didn't work out. More about that later. Let me start by saying, on paper, this is an absolute beast of a machine. The big step forward between this machine and traditional ones like my Works Landroid is the way it navigates. For traditional robot mowers, a wire is installed around the perimeter of the garden, and this is what the mower uses to know where the lawn is. It basically just drives around randomly till it hits the wire and then moves in a different direction and it does eventually cover all the grass. The Luba has no wire and uses something called GPS RTK to know where the boundary is. Regular old GPS like you'd find in your phone is typically only accurate to about a meter or so, which is not enough for a device like this because the difference of a meter might have your mower in your flower beds, but using RTK can increase that accuracy down to a couple of centimeters. The Luba is not the only mower that makes use of RTK. The Navimo series by Segway also makes use of it, and you might have seen the Open Mower project by Clemens Eilfein, which is a project where he replaces the electronics of a cheap mower with custom ones he designed to make use of RTK. So this no boundary claim is definitely possible and not something that's too good to be true or anything like that. There is even proof that the Luba system works. The Something to Look At YouTube channel has a video of setting up the Luba. While I don't think installing the wire is that big of a deal, and the simple system does work fine, the more advanced navigation that the RTK system allows for is a plus for sure. Next feature I'd like to talk about is how big of an area it can cover. According to the Kickstarter, it can cover up to 5,000 square meters of grass a day, which is roughly the size of an American football field. And because you don't need to cut the grass every day, in theory, this means it could potentially cover a garden several times that size, which is probably going to cover most people's needs. There are traditional robot mowers that can also cover large areas like this, but they are much more expensive. To give some context, the Luba costs about the same as a 2000 square meter version of the Works Landroid. And that 2000 number is not what it can cover in a single day, it's just what it can keep on top of over a week or so. So you're definitely getting a lot more bang for your buck with the Luba. There are a few reasons I can see that allow it to cut so much. First, it has a much wider cutting width than most robot lawnmowers. At 400 millimeters, it's almost double that of the 2000 square meter works mower, which only has a 220 millimeter cutting width. It achieves this by using dual cutting plates. Second, it has a very large battery, a 10 amp hour battery compared to the 5 amp hour of the large works, which should allow it to stay cutting longer in between needing to go back and charge. And the third, and probably most important of all, is the advanced navigation. There is a lot of wasted movement with the random approach of the traditional mowers, as it could be covering the same part of the lawn multiple times because it doesn't know anything about where it has already been. But with the RTK system, it can plot out exact paths that it needs to mow, so there is basically no wasted movement. I don't know for sure how much the advanced navigation would improve efficiency compared to random movement, but I think a conservative estimate is about three or four times more efficient. But it's worth pointing out, just because the Luba is priced extremely competitively compared to other large area machines, it mightn't be good value for you. Most people will not have a garden that requires anything like what the Luba can do. For example, my lawn is about 800 square meters and my mower cost about $900, which is significantly less than the Luba. So a more traditional robot lawnmower might be better value for a lot of people. 
It might be a little bit slower than the Luva to get the job done, but once it's staying on top of the lawn, it really doesn't matter. The last thing that stands out is that, in general, it's a really high spec machine. It can handle much larger slopes than most regular robot lawnmowers. It has suspension, which is not something you typically see on a robot mower. And it has a lot of features built in that are optional extras on other machines, like the obstacle avoidance sensor. Other than that, I think it's going to be pretty similar to other robot lawnmowers. I think the overall experience of having the Luba versus traditional robot mowers will be quite similar. A lot of the other stuff mentioned in the Kickstarter, like automatic charging, height adjustment, rain sensor, safety features like a lift sensor, and low noise, are just features of robot lawnmowers in general. I recently bought this Yard Force for less than $400 and it has all of those. That's not necessarily a bad thing. We bought our robot lawnmower two years ago and it's been one of the best purchases we've ever made. It is amazing to just always have a cut lawn. I made a video last year about robot mowers describing the advantages and disadvantages and I think most points in that video will still be valid here. So if you're curious about getting robot mowers in general, it's worth checking that video out. So it looks great on paper, it's very well specced, and priced extremely competitively compared to alternatives. So why am I saying I wouldn't back it? Well, there are a few reasons. The first reason is just Kickstarters in general. With Kickstarter, you have zero protections for your money. Zero. Companies have absolutely no requirement to fulfill rewards to backers, and there are unfortunately plenty of examples of backers getting burnt in the past. The Tico 3D printer raised $3 million of 16,000 backers. They shipped the first 4,000 units, which were apparently terrible, and they went bankrupt, leaving 12,000 backers with nothing. More recent, and probably more relevant, is the Toady robot lawnmower. Backers were originally promised to get their device in November 2020, and if you look at the comment section of the Kickstarter, there's still a lot of backers who haven't received anything yet. Now, a lot happened in 2020, so maybe you can't put all the blame on the campaign runners there, but these people thought they were getting a robot lawnmower in 2020, and they still don't have one, so the money is gone, but their need for cutting grass is still there, so they probably had to sort something else out in between. So this is the type of thing that can happen with a Kickstarter. Even on Kickstarter's own website, there is a report that 9% of projects fail to deliver their rewards. Which is why you should never, ever put money into a Kickstarter you cannot afford to set on fire. I don't know about you, but I don't have $1,200 of lighting on fire money. It's even called out pretty clearly on the Kickstarter page. Rewards are not guaranteed. So it is interesting that the very first words in the campaign are guaranteed delivery by Man Motion. Hmm, we'll talk about that in a second. And even if you get the product, you don't have the same consumer protections you would if you bought it through a traditional store. If the machine does not work correctly or breaks, they are not obliged to do anything about it. Again, they say that they will, but what does that mean? The second reason is there are a couple of weird things about this Kickstarter, like that guaranteed delivery claim. Guaranteed by what? What is the recourse if they don't deliver? It's mentioned at the top of the page. It's mentioned in the risks and challenges section that guarantee 100% delivery for all pledges and backers will definitely receive the products after ordering. And again, in the FAQ section, the Luba team guarantees 100% delivery for each reward purchased but there is no additional information on how this guarantee works. I could guarantee that I'm the wallet inspector, 
But what happens if I'm not? Hey, that's not the wallet, Inspector. If you buy something in a store and it has a guarantee, there is a legal recourse if you have problems with that product. There doesn't seem to be anything here, and I don't think that looks great. I think they are just trying to convince any doubts in buyers' minds with nothing backing it up. But I hope they deliver as promised, and I never have to be proven right on this one. Another thing unusual about this Kickstarter is the low goal. It's only just over $6,000, or 5 lawnmowers. Which, let's be honest, really isn't enough to do anything with for a project like this. I think when most people think about Kickstarters, they think of this product that is being pitched that would not exist if it wasn't for people backing it on Kickstarter, but this is not that. Even without the low goal, since they're planning on shipping more starting in July, this product needs to be basically already completed. The fact that it's in CE certification, according to their timeline, also indicates this. This means they are using Kickstarter as a pre-order platform. But they certainly wouldn't be the first to use it like this, and they won't be the last. Those clips I played earlier are from the 3D printing nerd reviewing a Bamboo Labs 3D printer that launched on Kickstarter just this week, and they are doing the exact same thing. They're starting shipping in July, and they have a low goal too. I think it's worth noting, the way Kickstarter works is if the project fails to meet its funding goal, the funds get returned to the backers. So if you wanted to guarantee you get the funds, regardless of the project being particularly successful or not, setting a low goal would be one way to do it. This one might be nothing, but it seems strange to me that there is no mention of potential risks to the project of chip or component shortages. Even if you've no interest in electronics, you've probably heard or even felt the impact of these shortages that have been happening for the last couple of years. Sony can't make enough PS5s, my 14 year old car has probably doubled in value due to the restricted supply of new cars, and even the Open More project, which was released less than two months ago, has already had to make a change because of the chip shortage. So if it's impacting everybody from small players like the Open More project to giants like Sony and the automotive industry, how can the Luba team be so confident it will not impact them? Just to be clear, it's very possible they are using components that are not impacted by the shortage, but even if that was the case, it's surely still a risk. Because you never know when some giant player comes along and just buys up the entire stock of a component. It is also possible that they already have their hands on the required components, then it obviously wouldn't be a risk. There's also the mention on the Kickstarter of 80 patents, and I'd be very interested to see what those patents are. Because, as I mentioned earlier, they're not the first company to use RTK, so I'm not sure what those 80 patents could be. Uh, more info on that, please. And the final point is why I don't have one. I mentioned at the start of this video that I was in contact with Mamotion about reviewing a Luba, but it didn't work out. I'll explain what happened from my perspective, but you should make up your own mind about what you think of it. On April 6th, I got an email from Amotion inquiring if I would be interested in reviewing the Luba. I have been making YouTube videos for about five years, and I get emails about reviewing products somewhat regularly, but I've never taken anyone up on it. But I've never been offered anything even close to the value of the Luba before either. Irrespective of the value, this was something I was genuinely interested in. As I hope I covered in the first section of the video, this is a technological advancement over traditional robot mowers that I really wanted to check out for myself. And unfortunately, robot mowers are not something I'm going to be able to fund myself to review. So for the first time ever, I responded. We exchanged a couple of emails before I sent my terms for doing the video. I'm going to highlight the ones they probably had the problems with, but I'll link to the full email if you want to read all of them. 
I said that they would have no input to the video that I made and the video would not be provided to them before its public release. And I would also be making it clear I had received the more for free and I would have to give a clear warning to my viewers about the risks of crowdfunding products, which would have been like I did earlier in this video. After I sent this email, they stopped responding to me. And you might be thinking, based on my thoughts earlier about Kickstarters, maybe they made the right decision. And look, I'm obviously not entitled to get a free robot more. But they were the ones who contacted me to do the review, so they were obviously interested in one point, but lost interest after my terms email. I personally feel if a company has nothing to hide and they genuinely want an honest review about the product, they would not have had an issue with my terms. As mentioned, I would have loved to have tested this thing, so I'm really disappointed it didn't work out, but I'm not willing to compromise my integrity for the sake of getting a robot lawnmower. I wasn't asking for anything out of the ordinary, this would be really typical review terms for a tech channel, so I don't know, make of that what you will. Even ignoring the risks of Kickstarter, without proper reviews available, I think it makes it impossible to justify spending this kind of money on a machine. I mentioned earlier about something to look at's video, and at the time of me making this video, it's the only video on YouTube showing the Luba that's not directly from my motion, and it's not really a review. They show setting up the Luba on a small area and doing some mowing. So this video proves that the Luba is a thing and it works, but even that small use case came with some caveats of features that would be fixed in a future update. For all the negative things I said, I genuinely hope it all works out for people. I hope everyone who backs the project gets their rewards in the time frame promised, the Luba ends up being a success and becomes a competitor to existing robot lawnmowers available, but I guess time will tell. I'll see you next time. Salon.